Everybody, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Yes, Hi. I can hear you. Great, thank you very much. Okay, well, first of all, um, I need to apologize to all of you because, well, I couldn't be here yesterday, but that's because I didn't have any electric energy here, no electricity, there was a blackout. And uh, well, we got the energy back later. Okay, so basically I had no internet service. So I'm sorry that we had to move it to Friday, but here we are, okay? And thank you for being here. Thank you for um, attending the class and being um, online for it. Here's what we're going to do. Um, no problem, teacher. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for understanding. Okay. Um, sharing the screen now with you. And uh, I'm going to call the attendance list. Just give me a second, it's here. Okay, so Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Is Alejandro Jose Quintanilla here? Alejandro Jose Quintanilla, no. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, present teacher. Good evening, thank you. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Racinos. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Racinos. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Present teacher. Thank you. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Selina Yvette Gutierrez Osorio. Present. Thank you. Denis Isaías Gómez. Rodas. Good evening, present. Good evening, thank you. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present. Thank you. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Erika Maidel Antonio Flores. Present. Thank you. Francisco Alberto Lemos Guzmán. Present teacher, I'm here. Thank you. Iris Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jose Raivin Enriquez. Present. Thank you. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Good evening, teacher present. Good evening. We have a chat entry. Alejandro Quintanilla says present. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla Tejada. Thank you. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Ronald Antonio Luna López. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. Present teacher. Uh, sorry teacher because now I am in a trip at home and I don't have uh, a good internet connection for that reason I will be only as I list them today. Okay, no problem. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, I'm calling some of the names again. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Alicia Guadalupe. Ana Yanira Mendoza. Ana Yanira Mendoza. Andrea Geraldine Sanchez. Andrea Geraldine Sanchez. 
Um, Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol. Boris Martín Salinas. Boris. Erika Ernesto Linares. Paseándolo. Acá. Erika Ernesto Linares. Iris Regina Hernández. Iris. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana. Jenny Elizabeth. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel. No. Okay. All right. We start the class. Welcome, everybody. This is Inglés Pre Avanzado, Modulo Uno. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. This is session number seven. This is actually not is it session number seven or session number eight. I've lost count. Should be session number eight, right? If I'm not mistaken. Let me think. Yes, yeah, it's eight. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I need to correct that. Yeah, because it's it's the final one this week. So I'm sorry. Okay, session number eight. And today is March the 10th of 2023. So um, let's do this, okay? If you remember what we studied last time, I'm going to just show it to you very quickly. Rewrite these requests to make them more formal. Then practice making your requests with a partner. Accept or decline each request. So what do you have? Lend me some books, lend me some money for an espresso. Take these books back to the library for me. That's number two. Number three, let me wear your letter jacket to the party this weekend. I'd like to borrow your cell phone to call my friend in London. Can I look at that newspaper when you finish reading it? Can I can take care of my pet rabbit while I'm on vacation? So I need volunteers. Basically, what we need to do is we need to rephrase these requests in a more polite way. What are we going to use? We're going to use this. I'm going to just make it a little bigger. So uh, request with models if clauses in general. This is what we studied on um, Tuesday. Okay, then we continue on Wednesday. We did a lot of practice on this. And now Friday, uh, there's an exercise an extra exercise. So you have this less formal when you say, can I borrow your pencil? Could you lend me your jacket? Is it okay if I use your phone? Do you mind if I use your CD burner? If you remember when you use, is it okay if, and do you mind if you have to use a subject and then the verb in present tense, okay? Like, is it okay if I use? Do you mind if I use? Now, when you have, would it be okay if, you have to use the verb in past. Would it be okay if I picked it up on Friday night? Would you mind if I borrowed your digital camera? You have to use the verb in past. That's very important when you have would and if. Now, after the verb mind, if you don't have if, after the verb mind, you have to use a form in ING. Like, would you mind letting me use your laptop? Would you mind closing the door, etc.? Nadia Isolina has a question. Yes, teacher. Uh, if I don't understand because uh, many sentence finally with a question mark and others and mm -hmm. with a point. With a period. Ah, mm -hmm. that's because when you say "Can I?" That's a question. Could you? That's a question. Is it okay? That's a question. Do you mind? is a question. Would you mind? It's also a question. But when you say, I wonder, that's not a question. Or I was wondering, that's not a question. It's a statement. That's why we don't use uh, a question mark at the end. Mm -hmm. Again, can I, could you, is it okay? Do you mind if? Would it be okay if? Would you mind if again? Would you mind? All of these are questions. That's why you have a question mark at the end. But when you say, I wonder, or I was wondering, again, those are not questions. Those are statements. That's why they end the period. So the key is every time you see, I wonder, or I was wondering, no question mark, okay? So um, 
then you have this, would you mind letting me use your laptop? After the verb mind, if you have to use another one, you have to use it in ING form. And then I wonder if I could borrow some money. Okay, so you use the past form, okay, if I could. I was wondering if you would mind lending me your car. Now, I'm just going to, oops, shrink it back. Now, let's see. Okay, so what are you going to do? I just need you to be volunteers here and tell me one form. There are many different ways of doing this, okay? But I want you to take a look at the first one, the first sentence, lend me some money for an espresso. You know, the espresso is just like the essence of coffee, which is very bitter. So lend me some money for, a, for an espresso. How can you say this sentence in a more formal way? Nadia Isolina, then Anna Filomena. And example number one, mm -hmm. I, I wonder is lend me some money for espresso? I wonder if, um, it's a bit different because you can say, I, might, I wonder if I could, or I wonder if you could, or I wonder if you, will, if you uh, would mind. It's a little bit different. But, well, thank you for your participation. Let's see what Anna Filomena has to say. Maybe she can help us. Maybe it can be, would you mind letting me some money for an express? Would you mind lending me some money for an espresso? Yeah, that's another way of doing it. So let's take a look at the possible ways of doing this. Hey, what's going on? It's not working. Okay. Okay. Um, this is what you mentioned. Would you mind lending me some money for an espresso? That's a way. You can also say, could you lend me some money for an espresso? That's another way. You can also say, I was wondering if you would mind lending me some money for an espresso. You can say it like that, but that's very, very formal. It's not necessary actually to say it like that, but you can use it of course, but it's very, very formal. So what uh, Ana Filomena said was great. Okay, uh, would you mind lending me some money for an espresso? We have a chat entry here. Jenny says, present. Okay, Jenny, let me record your attendance. Jenny, Elizabeth Santiana Cortez. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, let's go with number two. I'm going to do away with this. Number two, take these books back to the library for me. There are many different ways of expressing this, but I only need one form. Who wants to participate? Mm -hmm. uh, could you take back those books to the library for me? Okay. Exactly. The first one we have here, could you take these books or could you take back is also possible. Uh, these books to the library for me. Good. Okay. That's Jose's example. Alternatively, you can also say, would you mind taking these books back to the library for me? And I was wondering if you would mind taking these books back to the library for me. Okay, very formal, but it works. Okay, thank you, Jose. That is good, very good. Um, let's go with number three. Number three is, let me wear your leather jacket to the party this weekend. How about this one? Try to participate. Si, si no le dan al blanco, ¿verdad? Si no tienen la respuesta correcta, pues lo peor que va a pasar es que vamos a llegar a la respuesta correcta <laughs> y vamos a aprender todos juntos en el proceso, ¿verdad? Selina y Beth. Selina. Hi. Hi. Would you mind if I wear your leather? jacket to the party this weekend would you mind if i wear your leather jacket let's see okay uh it's right here the third one do you mind or would you mind also if i wear your leather jacket to the party this weekend correct 
Alternatively, you can say, can I wear your leather jacket to the party this weekend? You can also say, is it okay if I wear your leather jacket to the party this weekend? You can also say, would it be okay if I wore your leather jacket to the party this weekend? And also, I wonder if, we, if I could wear your leather jacket to the party this weekend. And also, I was wondering if you, if you would mind if, no, no, that would, that would not be possible. But if you would mind if I wore your jacket, yeah, it's possible to say it anyway. But yeah, there are many ways of saying this. Maritza says present. Okay, Maritza, let me find your name here. Maritza Isabel Mendez. Okay, attendance taken. Thank you very much. All right. All of these sentences are possible. Okay, so very good. What about number four? I would like to borrow your cell phone to call my friend in London. How about this one? Remember that I only need one polite request. You could go for the simplest one, but if you want to try one that is more difficult, you can also do it, no problem. We have a chat entry. It is Regina. Uh, let me find your name. It is Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Okay, attendance taken. Thank you, Iris. Okay, um, who wants to try number four? I'd like to borrow your cell phone to, to call my friend in London. Vamos, sin miedo al éxito, ni al fracaso. Who wants to try? Dennis. Okay, but before that, Dennis, let me check the... Jenny Salinas, estaré solo de oyente porque voy manejando. Uy, cuidado. No me vaya a distraer al volante. Peligroso. Okay, Dennis. Number four. Would it be okay if I borrowed your cell phone to call my friend in London? Would it be okay? All right. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Right here. Would it be okay if I borrowed your cell phone to call my friend in London? Absolutely. You can also say, can I borrow your cell phone to call my friend in London? You can say, is it okay if I borrow your cell phone to call my friend in London? Do you mind if I borrow your cell phone to call my friend in London? I wonder if I could borrow your cell phone to call my friend in London, etc. This one needs a period, uh, but I cannot put it here because, well, it will be complicated. Okay, very good. Thank you, Dennis. Correct. What about number five? Can I look at that newspaper when you finish reading it? Who wants to try? Who wants to try? Jose. Okay, thank you, Jose. Do you mind if I look at that newspaper when you're finished reading it? Do you mind? It's here. Do you mind if I look at that newspaper when you finish reading it? Absolutely. Correct. Thank you, Jose. That's good. You can also say, can I look at that newspaper when you finish reading it? Is it okay if I look at that newspaper when you finish reading it? Uh, would it be okay if I looked? At that newspaper when you finish reading it and I wonder if I could look at that newspaper when you finish reading it. All those are possible. Thank you. Number six, the last one, Nadia. Okay, Nadia. Uh, take, take my, uh, take, sorry, it's take care of my pet rabbit while I'm on vacation. Okay. Uh, could you, could you care of my pet rabbit while I am on vacation? One word is missing. Falta una palabra ahí. Could you? Could you take care? Aha. Uh -huh. Could you take care? Of my pet rabbit while I am on vacation? Absolutely. Could you take care of my pet rabbit while I'm on vacation? Very good. Thank you, Nadia. Also, you can say, would you mind taking care of my pet rabbit while I'm on vacation? And I was wondering if, we, if you... I got stuck. This is a tongue twister. I was wondering if you would mind taking care of my pet while I'm on vacation. Sorry, I'm a little tired. It's Friday. <laughs> okay, very good, everybody. Uh, very good results. It's actually pretty neat. That's now let's check number 3.4. Okay, let's let's advance because we're supposed to finish the unit today. 
um, lesson objective, by the end of this class, you will develop skills in listening for specific information, listen to requests, listen to telephone conversations. That's 3.5. That's a lesson objective. So what are we going to do? You're going to listen to uh, th some conversations. OK, and you have done this exercise. It appears in the platform. But if you haven't completed it, this is your chance to get the right answers. So I want you to listen to the conversations and uh, to choose the correct answer. So number one, what does Tina want to borrow from from Robert? A bread maker, a camera or a bird? Number two, what does Kyle want to borrow from Maggie? A bread maker? A camera or a bird, same options. And number three, what kind of favor does Phil want? Phil wants Li Ling to take care of his bird while he's away. Phil wants Li Ling to lend him her camera or Phil wants Li Ling to lend him her bread maker. So I'm going to play the track once or twice if necessary. And I want you to listen and pick the right answers. All right. Let me know if you can hear it. Could you hear that? Like a dialing, okay, sound. Okay, here we go. Everybody, yes. please listen. Great, thank you. Everybody, please listen. Please listen and, and complete the exercise. Hello? Hi, Robert. This is Tina. Hi, Tina. What's up? Well, actually, would you mind lending me your camera for a few days? I want to take some photos of my new apartment to send to my folks. No problem. You can borrow it. Oh, thanks a million. Hello? Hi, Maggie. This is Kyle. Oh, hi. How are things with you? Pretty good. Listen, I was wondering if I could borrow your bread maker. My bread maker? Don't tell me you are going to bake. I know. I'm planning to cook dinner for my girlfriend this weekend, and I want to bake bread. And I want it to be perfect. I remember you baked some amazing bread with that thing. So, what do you say? Can I borrow it? I'll be careful. Well, I have bad news. It's broken. I've been meaning to get it fixed, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Oh, too bad. But you know, you can always just bake bread on your own. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'll just go to a bakery. Hello? Hi, Li Ling. It's Phil. Hi, Phil. What's up? Not much, but I was wondering if I could ask you for a favor. Maybe. Try me. Well, I have to go out of town for a few days next week. Uh-huh. Could I leave Polly with you while I'm gone? Polly? Who's Polly? You know. Polly. My bird? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Your bird. I don't know, Phil. I really don't like birds very much. They're messy, and they make a lot of noise, and... No! Not Polly. She's really a great bird. She's really clean and very quiet. She won't bother you, I promise. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I'll bring her over on Tuesday night. Okay. But you owe me one. Okay. So, what does Tina want to borrow from Robert? What is that? Ana Filomena, then Jose, then Katia. Okay. A camera. A camera. That is correct. Okay, very good. She wants to borrow a camera. Good. Jose, number two. What does Kyle want to borrow from Maggie? A bread maker. A bread maker. That's correct. Very good. And Katia Graciela, what kind of favor does Phil want? Phil wants Liling to take care of his beer while he's away. Phil wants Liling to take care of his bird while he's away. Correct. Okay, very good. All right, everybody, that is great. Okay, good listening skills. And now we have to go for some vocabulary. 824, yeah, still have time. We still have some grammar section. So word power collocations. What, which verb is not usually paired with each noun, okay? Put a line through the verb and compare with a partner. So you have, for example, number one, owe an apology, offer an apology, do 
an apology, accept an apology. Three of them are good, but one is not. Which one is not correct? Which verb is not usually paired with an apology? Jose. Do. Do. Okay, let's take a look. That's correct. Do. You don't use do with an apology. Okay. You can you can owe a person an apology. You can offer an apology. That's good. You can accept an apology. Okay, but you don't do an apology. Speaking of which, there's some vocabulary. There's some vocabulary that I want you to uh, check out. You can say, for example, imagine that you want to apologize to someone. You can say, I owe you an apology. Uh, te debo una disculpa. You can also demand it from a person. You can say, you owe me an apology. You can say that. You owe me an apology. Me debes una disculpa. Okay. You can say apology accepted. Right? When somebody says, hey, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry about what I did. And I want you to know that this won't happen again. Then you say, mm, okay, apology accepted. Right? So some expressions that you can use with the, word, with the noun phrase and apology. So what about number two? You have do a phone call, return a phone call, make a phone call, or receive a phone call. Which one doesn't belong? Nadia. Mm, make. Make a phone call. Actually, yes. Make a phone call is possible. You make phone calls. It's another verb that you cannot use. Do. Do a phone call. That is right. You don't do home, uh, phone calls, okay? You can return a phone call, you can make a phone call, and you can receive a phone call, but you don't do phone calls. Thank you very much. What about number three? You have a favor. Return a favor, do a favor, ask for a favor, and make a favor. Which one is not right? Katia Graciela, Juan de Candray. For some reason, I like saying your complete name. Okay, it's easy to say. Okay, so. Why did? <laughs> I don't know. It's easy to say. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. There's like a rhythm to it, right? Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Okay, teacher. Okay, so number three. I think ask for. Ask for a favor. Actually, you can ask for a favor. If I say, hey, Katia, can, please, I need a favor. I am asking for a favor. So, okay, and, uh, okay. is return. Return a favor. Actually, yes, you can return a favor. <laughs> if, if, okay, I do you a favor and then you say, um, okay, you do me a favor, then you return the favor. So, what, what mm -hmm. is it? Do again. Do again. Uh, sorry, but yeah, you could do a favor. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. sorry. No, and don't worry. You don't need to apologize. Okay, estamos aprendiendo. No hay problema. Okay, so you can say that. Do me a favor. That's a very common expression. Okay, so ask me un favor. Do me a favor. You say that. So in the end, the one that doesn't belong is make. You don't make a favor. You can return a favor. That's good. You can do a favor. That's very general. You can ask for a favor, but you don't make a favor. Okay, so careful right there. But thank you, Katia, for your participation. We're learning, no problem. Number four, Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. An invitation. Do you receive an invitation, accept an invitation, turn down an invitation, offer an invitation? Which one doesn't belong? Receive in an invitation. Receive an invitation. Actually, invitation. You, you can receive an invitation. Yeah, if I have a party and I give you an invitation, you get it, you receive it. You receive an invitation. Yeah. It's another yes. one. Um, accept. Accept an invitation. Accept Actually, you, you, can, you can accept an invitation, yeah? Uh -huh. If you give me an invitation yeah. to your party and I say, yes, Noemi, Alicia, I will go to your party. I accept your invitation. Yes. 
Third yes. opportunity. Uh -huh. Which one is it? Turn down or offer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Offer. Offer. Okay, that's right. You don't offer an invitation. You can an send. Invitation. Uh huh. You can send an invitation. You can receive an invitation. You can accept an invitation. You can turn down an invitation. And what is the meaning of turn down an invitation? Does anybody know? This can... Uh huh. Yes. What is the meaning? Turn ah, down. The meaning of turn down. Okay. Yes. Imagine that you have yes. a party. You have a party and you give me an invitation. I receive the invitation, but I tell you, uh, sorry, Katya, I can't go to your party because I have to work. I turn down your invitation. Mm -hmm. okay, That's teacher, the meaning thank of it. You. You're welcome. Teacher is a synonym of a refuse. Uh huh, refuse. You refuse an invitation, mm -hmm. you turn it down. Correct. Erika Flores wants to participate. Number five, a request. You make a request, deny a request, offer a request, or refuse a request. I think offer a request. Offer a request. That's right. Okay. You don't offer a request. Okay. Okay. Sería como ofrecer una petición. No, no tiene sentido. Okay. So, yeah, you can make a request. That's possible. You can deny a request, okay? That's possible. You can refuse a request, but you don't offer a request, okay? Correct answer. Thank you, Erica. Very good. What about number six? I need a volunteer. Who can help us do this? Mm -hmm. Katia Graciela, ¿cuándo tendrá? <laughs> Apologize, teacher. For what? What is the <laughs> for ask? <laughs> what is the meaning uh, of teacher? What uh -huh. is the deny? Ah, deny is the negar. The negar or negar. Okay, that's deny. Mm -hmm. You can okay. deny a request. You say, Le hacen una petición y usted dice no. Okay, you deny a request. No, sorry. Okay. That's the meaning of deny, negar okay. or denegar. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, um, Maritza Isabel then, number six. You have a gift. You deny a gift, re re you're welcome. You receive a gift, give a gift, or refuse a gift. Deny the chair. You deny a gift. Yeah, that's right. You don't deny a gift, but you can receive a gift. You can give a gift and you can refuse a gift. Imagine they give you something very expensive and you say, oh my God, no, I cannot take this. Thank you very much, but I can't. <laughs> so you refuse a gift or you can receive it, okay? <laughs> no problem. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Maritza. Number seven, okay, uh, that's the last one. Who wants to try? Who wants to try number seven? Come on, don't be shy. Noemi, uh, you have a compliment, okay? What is a compliment? When a person tells you, for example, hey, you're very intelligent, ah, thank you. Or I really like your haircut, oh, thank you. That's a compliment. Or when a person tells you, I like your new dress, ah, thank you very much. That's a compliment, okay? Un cumplido. So Noemi, do you... Uh, receive a compliment, return a compliment, do a compliment, give a compliment, which one doesn't belong? Uh, your microphone, sorry. Receive or return a compliment? Well, uh, you need to select because there's only one that doesn't belong. Um, receive. Actually, you can receive a compliment. Uh -huh. Receive a compliment. It's possible. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Second opportunity. Mm. Give. Give, a, give compliment. a compliment. Actually, you can give a compliment. It's possible to give a compliment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Third try. 
Do. Do. Do a compliment. That's right. Okay, it is do. So um, you don't do a compliment, okay? But you can receive a compliment. You can return a compliment. They say, hey, I like your hat. Thank you. I like your shoes. Okay. You return a compliment. And you can give a compliment to someone, okay? But you don't do a compliment. All right. Uh, Nadia, I don't know if you have a question or if you wanted to participate. I have a question, teacher, okay. about question? the about this exercise, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't understand very well. Uh, this verb is not usually paired. Mm. It is uh, is incorrect. Do we can use this? The thing is, if you use it, probably people will understand, but. Uh, we don't use, but but people don't use it. That's the problem. I mean, they will understand, but but they will probably correct you in the process. If I, if I say, uh, can you make me a favor? The person will understand, but they will tell you, actually, can you do me a favor? Okay. So that's why these verbs are not usually paired with these nouns. To be honest, I mean, my advice will be never use them with these nouns. Not only usually, I will say never use them. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. Jose, do you have a question? Teacher, I imagine that it's like in Spanish when some people say, Aiga. We understand, but we know that that's not correct. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. We understand, but yeah, it's, it is not correct. Actually, in Spanish, we say a lot of things wrong. Okay. And a lot of people don't know. For example, um, for example, imagine, um, and this is very common. Everybody makes the mistake. I make this mistake all the time. People say, delen, okay? When actually this is wrong, it's actually dengle. That's the correct form, okay? But but we don't talk like that. Everybody say, delen ustedes, hay delen, right? But, but it's actually dengle, okay? That's the correct form of saying it. But yeah, exactly. People use it, but it's not correct. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of similar here. My advice is don't use these verbs, okay, with these nouns. Use the other ones, okay, or you will be making a mistake. Okay, good. It's some vocabulary, okay. Please review this vocabulary uh, in case you don't have it. I'm going to send it to you via WhatsApp right now. Let's see. But there's something I don't like about these. Um, you know what, uh, this could be confusing. So instead, I'm going to do something here. Just in order not to make it confusing, I'm just going to copy the slide and I'm going to, um, where is this? Okay. Over here. Mm, I'm going to use this instead because it, it, it may get confusing if I, uh, if we're using the circles. So instead I'm just going to, wait, ah, okay, right here. So instead I'm just going to delete these and I'm going to use this. Otherwise it may look a little bit confusing. So just a second before I send it to you, okay? Sorry about this. <laughs> Should have done it before. Mm -hmm. And this one, finally. Okay, now I can send it to you. I just wanted to avoid any misunderstandings. Que fuera alguien a decir de pronto por confusión. Ah, están encerradas porque esa es la que se ocupa. No, al revés. Estamos marcando la que no se ocupa. Okay, so um, if you check your WhatsApp group, oh, well, somebody already sent it <laughs> with the circles. Okay, no problem. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, it's there. All right, let's continue. Uh, lesson objective. By the end of this class, you will learn indirect requests. Okay, now we have learned very polite requests, but now we're going to study indirect requests. That's another thing that we need to study. So it's 3.7 lesson objective. What's the grammar focus? Indirect requests. Okay, so um, if you take a look, there are statements like this. You say, Jeff, Tony is having a party. What is an indirect request introduced by that? Could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? Le podría decir a Jeff que Tony va a tener una fiesta? Okay. Could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? You can use it with imperatives. What is an imperative? When you give an order to someone. Jeff, don't be late. Especially if the order is negative. In, sorry, indirect requests using infinitives. Can you tell Jeff not to be late? That's the way you do it. Again, you know me, you're going to do a couple extra exercises after this, so don't worry. When you have yes, no questions like this, Sophia, are you free, are you free on Friday? Or Sophia, do you have my number? You ask in direct requests introduced by if or whether. You can also say whether or not. What is the meaning of whether? It's the same as if. Whether and if have the same meaning, but whether is more formal. So when you ask Sophia, are you free on Friday? You can say, can you ask Sophia if she's free on Friday? Could you ask Sophia if, okay? If it's a yes, no question, you say if. Also, Sophia, do you have my number? Could you ask her or could you ask Sophia whether or not she has my number? You can also say whether she has my number. It's also okay. WH questions or information questions. Jeff, when does the party start? Sophia, what time should I pick you up? Uh, yes, Nadia. Teacher, I don't understand what is the mean weather. Ah, and... No problem. Weather is the same as if. It's the same. Same meaning. So um, let's check an example. Okay. Wow. Okay. Could you ask Sophia if she's free on, on Friday? It's the same if you say, could you ask Sophia whether she's free on Friday? And also you can ask the question, could you ask Sophia whether or not she's free on Friday? The three are possible. So when you say, could you ask Sophia whether or not she's free on Friday? Podrías preguntarle a Sofía si está libre el viernes o no? Okay, whether or not. That's how you use it. So what's the meaning of weather? Eh? Weather is the same as if, but more formal. Weather is more formal than if. That's how it goes. But don't worry, we're going to study this in more detail in a few minutes. Because we have 8.43. Okay, so we still have like uh, 17 minutes. Okay, I'm um, going back to this. Okay, so WH questions, right? Indirect questions introduced by a question word. Can you ask Jeff when the party starts? Could you ask Sophia what time I should pick her up? Now, we're going to, to, to uh, I'm going to explain this in more detail. And I actually have to put several of these, say, um, uh, sections together. As you can see here, it's indirect questions, 3.8, introduced by that, 3.9, using infinitives, 3.10, introduced by if or whether, or 3.11, introduced by a question word. So I had to put them all together because it's a topic, but in the platform, they appear as different topics. So I'm trying to do this a little bit easier for you. Now, take a look. Okay, this is not in the platform. It is not in the manual. Okay, so let me uh, get a bit more comfortable to explain this. So indirect requests. What is this? Take a look. With imperatives, how do you do it? You use can you or could you? You use tell. 
and then the name of the person, you can use that, which is not absolutely necessary. That's why it's in parentheses, and then the message. For example, Tony is having a party. Tell Jeff. Entonces, Tony va a tener una fiesta. Dígale a Jeff. So the, the indirect request is, can you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? There you go. Can you? It's over here. You can also say, could you tell, right? Tell, then the person you're going to tell. Could you tell Jeff that, and then the message, Tony is having a party. Again, this that is not necessary because this is a relative clause and it begins, it doesn't have a verb here, so you can use it or not. Second example, dinner is ready. Tell your brother. Could you tell your brother that dinner is ready? Or simply, could you tell your brother dinner is ready? That's the structure right there. So when you have an imperative, okay, like tell Jeff, okay, uh, tell your brother. Give me a second. You say, can you, could you tell someone that? And then the message. Just give me a second I need to check something. No, I made a, give me a second here. I think I made a, uh, sorry, that's not imperatives. That's made a mistake here. Just give me a second. Ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. I made a mistake right there. Okay. It's not imperatives, it's statements. Okay. That's the structure for statements. So can you could you tell someone that and then the message? Now um, there is here, okay, an exercise following this structure. Okay, I want you to formulate this indirect request. I have a new job. Tell mom. Who wants to try? Dennis. Hey, hey, could, you, could you repeat the, the, the sample, please? Repeat the what, sorry? Uh, the, the sample. The examples. Okay, um, you have it here. Tony is having dinner, having a party, tell Jeff. So you say, can you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? Second example, dinner is ready, tell your brother. Could you tell your brother that dinner is ready? What about this one? I have a new job, tell mom. Uh, could you tell mom that I have a new job? Okay. Could you tell mom that I have a new job? Or could you tell mom I have a new job? There you go. Very good. Okay, great. Now you made an indirect request for a statement. Imperatives. Hoy sí van los imperatives. Me disculpo porque estaba diciendo imperatives antes y nada que ver. Eran statements. Ahora sí van con imperatives. Okay. Imperatives. You use can you or could you, and then you can use the verb tell or the verb ask. Either is fine. So tell or ask plus the person, and then if it's negative, you use not. If it's affirmative, then don't use not, okay? And then the message in two infinitive form, two infinitive. Examples, do the dishes, that's an imperative. Lave los trastos, okay, do the dishes, tell Jeff. You say, can you tell Jeff to do the dishes? That's the message in two infinitive form. Can you tell Jeff to do the dishes? Le puedes decir a Jeff que lave los trastos. What about a negative imperative? Don't make noise, tell your brother. Then you say, could you tell your brother not to make noise? If it's a negative imperative, then you use not, okay? Could you tell your brother not to make noise? Puedes decir a tu hermano que no haga ruido, okay? 
could you tell your brother not to make noise? What about the next one? Don't text and drive. No maneja y vaya ahí mensajeando a nadie. So don't text and drive. Tell Andy who wants to try. Maritza Isabel, then Saul. Um, could you tell Andy not text and drive? Okay, just one thing. Okay, could you tell Andy not to infinitive, not? Not to uh -huh. text and drive. Would you tell Andy not to text and drive? Correct. You have to use the two infinitive in this case. Very good. Thank you, Maritza. Uh, okay. Me. All right. Before I forget, y aprovechando que ya lo corregí esto, I'm going to send this to you. Okay. All right, you have the indirect request statements and imperatives. What's next? Indirect request with the yes, no questions, okay? Now, what is a yes, no question? It's a question where your answers are only yes or no. So if I ask you, can you drive? Yes or no. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes or no. Do you work on Sundays? Yes or no. Okay, those are yes, no questions because the only possible answers are yes, or no, okay? So when you have yes, no questions, you say, can you ask or could you ask? Then the name of the person, and then you have to use if or whether, or whether or not. And then the message in statement order. Now, this is very tricky. Very, very tricky because uh, originally you have questions like this one. Is Sophia free on Friday? You use question order. Is Sophia free? Like, is she free? But when you're asking an indirect request or a yes, no question, you have to finish in statement order, not in question order. Now, this can be very tricky, so pay close attention. Is Sophia free on Friday? Is Sophia free? Question form. Now, <clears throat> Can you ask Sofía if, cuidado acá, ya no vamos a ocupar la forma de pregunta, sino la forma de oración afirmativa. Ya no vamos a decir, is Sofía o is she. Vamos a decir, she is, como una oración afirmativa. Can you ask Sofía if she is free on Friday? No me van a decir, if is she, porque ahí estaríamos usando la forma de pregunta. Again, is Sophia free on Friday? Can you ask Sophia if she is free on Friday? Second example, does she have my number? That's present simple, third person singular. Does she have my number? Can you, sorry, could you ask her whether or not, or you can say if she has my number? No me van a decir, does she have my number? Porque esa sería forma de pregunta. Al terminar este tipo de indirect request, tiene que ocupar la forma de oración afirmativa. Statement order. Could you ask her whether or not she has my number? This is a bit tricky, okay? The same happens with WH questions. Let's try this one. Can Daniel drive? Puede preguntar a Daniel si puede manejar. Saúl Antonio. Um, I think is, uh, could you ask Daniel if he can drive? Could you ask Daniel if he can drive? Correct. Uh -huh. No vamos a decir, can he drive? No, porque es una pregunta indirecta. Vamos a decir, if he can drive, como si fuera una oración afirmativa. Can you ask Daniel or could you ask Daniel if he can drive? That is correct. Very good. Thank you. And then we have WH questions. ¿Cómo funciona? 
igual, solo que en vez del whether or not or if, usted va a poner el WH word. Por ejemplo, when, what time, where, etc. So you say, can you, could you, then ask, okay, someone, and then the WH word. What is the WH word? When, why, how, what time, how often, which, whose, etc., etc. And then you have to finish with the message in statement order, not in question order. So this is similar to yes, no questions. Alejandro, do you have a question or do you want to participate? Yes, teacher, I have a question. Okay, it's what's because your question? when I was um, do the exercise on mm -hmm. platform, mm -hmm. okay, um, I I watch that uh, when I have to do this kind of uh, questions, mm -hmm. we have to put the verb is, for example, and at the end, for example, could you um, the statement maybe says. Uh, where is the party? The, 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 the questions, the, the WH questions uh, is where is the party, right? Mm -hmm. So when we have to um, hacer uh, this mm -hmm. kind of, the other kind of the question, the example says, uh, could you ask Jennifer where the party is? And that is the correct way, right? Mm -hmm. But I have a question with the another uh, examples that the platform uh, nos daba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The other example is, could you ask Jennifer how many people are going to the party attend? The oh. question, the, the, the WH question um, says, um, I don't remember, but maybe, uh, how many people are, are going to attend to the party, I think. But I, I don't know how to uh, change the order of the words to do the, the uh, mm -hmm. this kind of indirect request with okay. WS questions. What was the statement in the end? So how many people are going to attend the party? And can you ask Jenny again, right? Yes. Yeah, how many people are going to attend to the party? And this is a question, right? Uh, okay. WS questions, yes. Okay. There is a difference, a fundamental difference right here. Okay, when you say, where is the party? You say, is the party? That's a st uh, question uh, order. Is the party? Yes. Can you ask Jennifer where the party is? Now you say the party is because that's statement order. The party okay. is on Friday. But what about this case? How many people are going to attend the party? This is something that we call subject question. Es un poco más complicado porque estas preguntas se llaman subject questions. Las subject questions ya de por sí tienen la forma de una oración afirmativa. Uh -huh. Entonces, si ya de por sí tienen la forma de una oración afirmativa, entonces no le vamos a cambiar el orden. Can you ask oh, Jennifer how many people are going to attend the party? Sorry, question mark at the end. Let me see. Let me think of another example. Okay, take a look. Si alguien le preguntara a usted, why did you break the mirror? This is past simple. Why did you break the mirror? Esto es el orden normal de una pregunta que incluye una WH uh, word, un auxiliar, yes. un sujeto y un verbo. Sorry that I'm explaining in Spanish, but we have little time. Entonces, esto se le conoce como una object question. Pero, ¿qué pasa cuando tenemos una subject question como esta? Who broke the mirror? En esta, la question word es el sujeto. Aquí no tenemos, no tenemos el sujeto porque queremos saber quién es. Cuando eso sucede, entonces la estructura normal de una pregunta ya no vale, porque si no nos quedaría algo como, who did break the mirror? 
Y eso no se puede porque falta el sujeto. ¿Pero por qué falta el sujeto? Precisamente porque no sabemos quién es, por eso estamos preguntando. Entonces, cuando usted va a hacer una pregunta como esta, como una indirecta, como los indirect requests que estamos viendo, entonces no habría que cambiar el orden porque ya de por sí está en el orden de un statement. Y eso es lo que sucede con la otra. Aquí podríamos decir, que uh, this is a WH question. Could you ask Raúl who broke the window? Okay. Mm -hmm. Aunque aquí no estamos yendo ya esto, WH questions. Pero sí, okay. así va. That's the reason. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So, uh, WH questions. Can you, what time should I pick up, pick Sofia up? So, could you ask Sofia what time I should pick her up? Ya no es, should I pick, sino I should pick, statement order. What about the third one? Where does Rick live? Who wants to try? Where does Rick live? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to try. Come on. Okay, teacher. Okay, Jenny. Huh? I'm sorry, Katia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ya me dio miedo. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, es, que, es que conozco a alguien con, con ese apellido que se llama Jenny, entonces. <laughs> no. For, okay. for name, no, for, for the answer. Yeah. So, so okay, so. We're... I try, teacher. Ah, okay, you try, you try. Okay. Yes. Can you ask? Can you ask Rick? Mm hmm. Mm. Then you need to know. use the WH word, which is? When live? Where? Okay, we're getting close. Maybe Maritza can help us. Hey, teacher. Uh, maybe could you ask Ricky? Rick? Rick? Could you ask, could, could you ask Rick, uh, Ricky where he lives? Could you ask Rick where he lives with an S at the end, right? Because it's present simple. But yeah, could you ask Rick where he lives? That is correct. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you, um, uh, Katia and Maritza. Okay, um, both of you helped do this. So um, what are we going to do? We have the last exercise because it's the knowledge check that we need to complete. So rewrite these sentences as indirect requests. You have done this before. Okay, so uh, in other words, ask someone to deliver the message for you, then compare with a partner, okay? I believe in the platform, it appears as not all of the statements are there, just a few of them. Yeah, only four, okay, but we have eight right here. So there's an example. Nina, can, can you do us a favor and drive us to the party? So can you or could you ask Nina if or whether or not she can do us a favor and drive us to the party? Okay. Do a favor. Well, she could drive us to the party will be enough. I think I already did it. She can. Sorry. <laughs> drive us to the party. Okay. Sorry. I already did it. Number two, you have this. Uh, Tony, how many friends can I bring to the party? It's in the platform, so who completed this? No more. <laughs> okay, I have no volunteers. Let's do something, okay? Maybe you can complete this as homework. And uh, we can check it on Monday because it's it's nine four, okay? And I think it's time to go. Everybody's tired, so I'm just going to send this to you. 
follow the example and follow the, ah, but before that, sorry, I didn't send this. I'm going to send this to you now. Okay, uh, here. Okay, so what I want you to do in your house is this. I'm going to give you the second one as a gift. So rewrite these sentences as indirect requests. In other words, ask someone to deliver the message for you. So it's here. It's getting a little bit late, so that's why I'm assigning this as homework. Okay, so everybody remember, uh, today uh, grades are sent and the progress is sent. So if you haven't completed any of the sections, it's, it's time for you to do it. Also, the midterm, okay? Uh, do the midterm. Es un examen, técnicamente. Así que hay que completarlo también. All right? Um, acuérdense de completar el midterm. Es bien, bien importante. Porque esa nota se va ahora, se supone. Okay, uh, I'm just going to take the attendance one more time before you finish, we finish, I'm sorry. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez, are you here? Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez? Romero? Okay. Uh, Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy? Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy? Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Recinos. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Recinos. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Boris Salinas. And Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Eric Ernesto. Okay. We have a chat entry here. Alejandro says present. Ah, sí, Alejandro ya te teníamos ahí. <laughs> Alejandro Quintanilla. I'm sorry. Sí, sí, ya, ya teníamos ahí registrados asistencia. Okay. Bueno, eh, nuevamente me disculpo el día de ayer por no haber estado, pero como les comentaba, había un apagón y vino ya la luz ya tarde, así que no, no se podía. Aún se ocupaba la laptop y la batería, no tenía internet. Así que lamento el inconveniente. Yo sé que los viernes, por lo general, eh, es día de descanso para nosotros. No nos gusta estar en clase, pero había que reponerla. Así que les agradezco a todos por estar eh, presentes, por su participación, ¿verdad?, y que tengan buen fin de semana. Everybody have a great weekend and I'll see you Monday. Okay. Remember to complete sections number one, two, and three and the midterm today. Okay. See you Monday. Thank you, teacher. Welcome. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.